So forgiveness and moving on. So my main uh, starting point really is that people are not perfect. Um, it's inevitable that we will all be hurt probably at multiple points throughout our life um, by people we love, by people we know, even by people that we don't know, by strangers. Um, and we um, almost um, can't really choose the way we react to hurt. A lot of the time it's instinctive, it's, react it's an, a, an immediate reaction to become angry, fearful, heartbroken, bitter, resentful, to hate the person that's done it. Um, but the great news is, um, is that Jesus suffered terribly at the hands of men. And um, while he was on earth, he suffered really awful things. And he knows exactly how we feel. Um, and it says in Psalms that the Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. Um, so we're not alone in going through um, hurt um, and in that kind of immediate aftermath where we're feeling broken hearted, God is there with us through it all. But we all come to a point um, where we have to make a choice about forgiveness. And forgiveness really is a choice that we have to make. It's not something that's easy to do. It doesn't come naturally, especially if you've been hurt very badly or potentially been let down repeatedly by the same person over and over again. It takes a, it's a complete act of will um, to forgive somebody. Um, or even at the first step, if, you, if you've been hurt that badly and you feel like you can't actually forgive them, just say, even to say, I forgive you. Um, it says in Matthew 5, um, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you so that you may be children of your father in heaven. So I really just encourage you that if you feel like you're not ready to forgive someone, um, just to pray for them um, or just pray that God will help you to forgive them. Um, pray for, that God would bless them if you can. Um, or just pray that God would help you. Um, and God will, um, he's faithful and he will soften your heart towards them gradually over time. Um, and eventually you'll get to a point where you're able to forgive them um, by his grace and in his strength. But it's really important to note that when you choose to forgive somebody, it is not saying that what they did was okay. It's not saying that what, you did, what they did to you didn't happen. It's not saying um, uh, forgiveness doesn't mean forgetting something and it doesn't mean pretending it didn't happen. Um, and it doesn't mean that what they did to you was okay. Forgiving someone does not mean their sin is absolved, um, and that's between them and God. So, um, yeah, basically, forgiveness is not forgetting or, or absolving them of their sin. It says in Psalm 37, turn from evil and do good, then you will dwell in the land forever. For the Lord loves the just and will not forsake his faithful ones. Wrongdoers will be completely destroyed. The offspring of the wicked will perish. The righteous will inherit the land. And in Romans, we're encouraged to not take revenge, but leave room for God's wrath. For it is written, it's mine to avenge, I will repay. Um, really, we can trust God because he is a God of justice. He hates sin um, and... He is faithful and just, and he will deal with that. The sin, when someone hurts us deliberately, that um, is their sin, and it separates them from God. Um, and that's between them and God. It's nothing to do with us. So us choosing to forgive them doesn't mean that they're going to be forgiven by God um, and that their sin is going to be absolved. So that's a really important note to make. Um, and unless they repent themselves and ask God for forgiveness, um, that they will remain separated from God. So why should we forgive? Um, it says in Luke, watch yourselves. If your brother or sister sins against you, rebuke them. And if they repent, forgive them. Even if they sin against you seven times in a day and seven times come back to you saying, I repent, you must forgive them. So really, um, we're told very clearly in the Bible that we must forgive people. Um, and in Ephesians, get rid of all bitterness, rage and anger, brawling and slander, along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God forgave you. Um, 
So really, yeah, it's just um, we have been forgiven um, ourselves when we came to God um, and repented of our sins and asked for forgiveness. Um, we were forgiven for all our sins and cleansed from all unrighteousness. And if we choose to not forgive somebody who's hurt us, then that makes us um, a complete hypocrite. Um, and I'll just read you the parable of the unmerciful servant. It's in Matthew 18. So it says, Then Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother or sister who sins against me? Up to seven times? Jesus answered, I tell you, not seven times, but 77 times. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. As he began the settlement, a man who owed him 10,000 bags of gold was brought to him. Since he was not able to pay, the master ordered that he and his wife and his children and all that he had be sold to repay the debt. At this, the servant fell on his knees. Be patient with me, he begged, and I will pay back everything. The, the servant's master took pity on him, cancelled the debt and let him go. But when that servant went out, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred silver coins. He grabbed him and began to choke him. Pay back what you owe me, he demanded. His fellow servant fell to his knees and begged him, be patient with me and I will pay it back. But he refused. Instead, he went off and had the man thrown in prison until he could pay the debt. When the other servants saw what happened, they were outraged and went and told their master everything. Then the master called the servant in, you wicked servant. I cancel all that debt because you begged me. Shouldn't you have had mercy on your fellow servant, just as I had on you? In his anger, his master handed him over to the jailers to be tortured until he should repay back all that he owes. This is how my heavenly father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brother or sister from your heart. Wow. Um, that's pretty depressing, <laughs> um, but really, um, the main thing is, is that we've been forgiven, and you know the whole point of of sin is that any type of sin separates us from God, um, and it doesn't matter if it, you know none of us is perfect, and we have all sinned and fallen short of God's glory. And if if we've come to God um, and asked for forgiveness, He's forgiven it, and, and it's all gone. Um, so then, if we choose to not forgive someone, no matter how bad a thing they've done to us um it is really not great um and god that is in itself a sin um so what happens when we don't forgive in matthew it says if you forgive other people when they sin against you your heavenly father will also forgive you but if you do not forgive others your father will not forgive your sins so it's really clear it's really key that um unforgiveness is a sin and sin separates us from God. Um, it um, will uh, impact our relationship with God, um, and it will mean, um, yeah, it'll, it basically just make our life pretty difficult. Um, and in Ephesians 4, it says, don't sin by letting anger control you. Don't let the sun go down while you are still angry, for anger gives a foothold to the devil. Um, so when we, um, choose to, to not forgive someone that unforgiveness um opens up our heart to the enemy basically um when we are separated from god due to sin um, or unforgiveness um we um are no longer under god's protection under his full protection and we're putting ourselves in a vulnerable position um and um also um uh by choosing to not forgive someone um, we can uh, cause roots of like bitterness and resentment to grow inside us um, and these will then in turn produce um, negative behaviors um, and these will really only at the end of the day hurt us and they will hurt probably those we love those who are around us because those negative behaviors come out and that will affect the way we treat other people and we won't be able to really fully love um, and be compassionate to others and um, share um, our lives openly with others while we've got these roots of bitterness and unforgiveness inside our hearts. And the good news is, if we do forgive, then good things happen. In Mark 11, it says, And when you stand praying, if you hold anything against anyone, forgive them, so that your Father in heaven may forgive you your sins. Um, 
So when we choose to forgive, God will forgive us in return and we can return to being in that close fellowship with God and he will hear our prayers. It says in Acts 3, repent then and turn to God so your sins may be wiped out and that a time of refreshing may come from the Lord. Um, so really we can move into a season of refreshing and a season of blessing if we come to God um, and uh, choose to forgive others and ask him to help us. And um, in that, he will really pour out his blessing and his love on us. Our relationship with him will be restored. We will be filled with the spirit um, and we will be able to move into freedom um, and move on. I wanted to read um, something else from a book. I know Marlene will recognise this book. I know she's a big fan. So this is called uh, The Keys to Freedom book. Um, and it's a really fantastic um, book that you can buy. I think it's only about £12. It's by Mercy. Um, I'll send the details out for it later. But it's, it's a really great book. Um, and it's basically, it just takes you through the steps um, to kind of go through your past and, and, and look at your life um, to sort of analyse areas of your life where you're, you might be having difficulties, where you might have unresolved sin or forgiveness unresolved you know issues with not forgiving people and um, look at all your behaviors and your the roots um, and so sort of yes yeah, it's, it's a really powerful um, book but there's a bit about forgiveness that I just wanted to read and it's all about oysters um, and I'll put a summary on the slide but I'll read out what they say because really um, you know they're professionals and uh, it sounds much better when, when, when they say it uh, it says have you ever considered the oyster oysters are the living organisms responsible for producing pearls. They live in harsh terrains where all sorts of dangers lurk. Grains of sand and parasites and sharp pieces of shell can find their way past the oyster's hard shell into the fleshy, soft tissue of the living organism. And when this happens, the oyster has a brilliant way of responding to the intrusion. It produces something called nacre, which is known as mother of pearl. And it's made and pearls are made up of layer upon layer of nacre. So oysters can in turn turn an obstruction, an irritant and a violation into a precious jewel by secreting this substance and covering the irritant, rounding its sharp edges until it can no longer cause damage. So only about 50% of oysters that have an irritant lodged inside them will produce a pearl. And if an oyster fails to produce this nacre, um, then the obstruction will have sharp edges and it will cut away and erode the soft tissue um, and it will kill um, the oyster that's inside the shell and it will leave an empty shell. And it says, you may know someone like that who's a bit like an empty shell. And much like the oyster, God has created us with the spiritual equivalent of NACA. We have an inner ability to respond to pain, hurt, offence, trauma and abuse that will cause these violations to halt their destructive path on the inside and it's called forgiveness. The oyster's strategy of defending itself against something that has lodged within its core is probably one of the clearest metaphors regarding forgiveness. We all live in an environment where the same grains of sand that can kill an oyster can make their way inside us and begin to cause damage. For us, those grains of sand can be offence, neglect, betrayal, abuse, disappointment, sin, lies, grief, gossip. The list goes on. The fact is that life can be harsh and it's ine inevitable that we will suffer some degree of hurt and pain along the way. But the level of damage we sustain is not dependent on the severity of the offence. It's dependent on our response to it. We may, we may not be able to choose what happens to us, but we can choose how we respond. Um, and to choose not to forgive is to choose to allow the process of decay and erosion to slowly kill you from the inside out. But if you choose to forgive, you choose life, freedom and hope. Praise God. Um, my last uh, slide is really just about how God can use our suffering for his glory. Um, this uh, kintsugi is something which uh, is quite a trendy thing at the moment. It's something that people, a lot of people are talking about. Um, and in Japan, basically broken objects are repaired with gold. The cracks are seen as a unique part of the object's history, which adds to its beauty. Um, and really our scars are beautiful to God. Um, everything that happens to us, God uses. Um, 
um, I believe uh, what happened to me was um, that God has used that to um, turn me into a different person. I, I don't, um, I don't, there was a time where I wish it wouldn't happen, but now I'm glad it happened because it has changed me and the, the way I got over it and everything that's happened to me since has, tra God has used it to transform me and change me into the woman I am today. And I wouldn't be able to stand here today and share my testimony with you guys if it hadn't happened. And I really believe that God uses our suffering and he allows us to suffer in certain ways um, so that his um, purposes can be fulfilled in our life, that he can change and transform us. Um, and really that our scars are beautiful that, and that we should um, show our scars like uh, this whole Kintsuji thing. Um, we should talk, we should share our testimony with people, we should tell people what we've been through and how God has brought us through it because there is a high chance that other people have been hurt in the same way in the past as we have um, and that they can be um, empowered and encouraged by our testimony and by how God has brought us through it. So really, um, you know, even for me in last year, um, I've had someone say to me that they've been through something similar and that they find the way I can um, share about it really encouraging for them and it's such a blessing for me to hear things like that um, and really I just want to encourage you all that if um, if you do feel like there's something or someone that you haven't forgiven if it's yourself um, or maybe it's family or maybe it's someone that did something to you a long time ago and um, this is a safe space and I think Alice is going to sort out the breakout rooms um, where we're going to go into small groups and I've prepared some questions and some verses to look at but really you know this is a safe space um, and even if you feel like you can't talk about it in your breakout rooms um, if you feel that God is is pinpointing something in your heart this evening um, don't let it slip away and um, please talk to someone that you that you trust and that you love about it um, or just just ask them to pray for you you don't even have to tell them what it is just just say, God's speaking to me, please, please pray for me. I need, I need to, do, to deal with something. And, and God is faithful um, and God will hear those prayers um, and he will help us to do it. I think that was it. Yeah, so I'll stop sharing. Okay, um, what we're gonna do, I was gonna stop recording. <laughs>